So if our concern is falling from grace, we need to first ask, what is grace? In the Greek, the word is charis or charis, and oftentimes it's translated as unmerited favor. But when you plug that definition into the way that we talk regularly, like, man, God, give me grace, God, give me unmerited favor, that doesn't always translate to how we're feeling. Or when you say, man, I need grace, or if uh, someone confesses a, a difficult sin or something they're working through in life, and you say, it's okay, there's, there's grace for you, unmerited favor kind of loses, I think, its force and its weight. And so I think a better working definition for us is this, that grace is the over-the-top, raw, undeserved, immeasurable, favored blessing of God, given through Jesus, rushing into every area of our lives and the empowering presence of God to become who he has called us to be. That is church. I'm sorry, that is grace, church. And that is what we need. And Paul is saying that is what the, the Galatians were in danger of falling from. Because any time you and I tried to add anything to grace, we lose everything about grace. And for Galatians, for those in the church, as Pastor Matt shared, they were trying to add Jewish tradition as a way to give themselves a better standing with God and push out other people who wouldn't follow the same kind of thing. They were creating this problem for themselves. And here, here's why grace is so important. The first thing is because grace is why we have a relationship with God to begin with. Ephesians 2, Paul says this, for it is by grace, that's the mechanism now, that you have been saved through faith. This is not of yourselves. Galatians, this is not because you are trying to justify yourself through the law. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Grace is why we have a relationship with God. The, the beauty and difference of Christianity is that we have not pursued God, but that he has pursued us. And that he has initiated this before we even found him. His first disposition towards us is, is one of grace. It's grace. It's always been that. We would also say that grace is how we maintain a relationship with God. In other words, grace saves you in the beginning and it keeps you until the very end. It's always been grace. No one at the end of their life is going to say, man, I, I did this on my own. <laughs> who's gonna talk like that? Who, who's gonna enter into the other side of eternity with the attitude that they made it? That shouldn't be us. It's always been grace. Everything that you and I stand to enjoy today it's a gift, it's undeserved, it's unearned. And there is within all of us this, this natural human tendency to believe that God owes us a better life. Even, even this week, Pastor Matt, preparing for this message, there, there were moments in my day, I, I may not say it out loud, but in my heart, I believe that the root of my irritation and daily frustration sometimes is because I think God owes me better. <laughs> but if I once again return to this idea that, man, all of it is a gift, all of it is a gift. But I think for some of us today, man, that, that seed of entitlement ha has choked out your ability just to breathe in and receive grace today. You are who you are by the grace of God and, and nothing else. The, the summation of your life is grace. Not only that, grace is also what we need for every real relationship. Every real relationship needs grace. Think, think about this for a moment. You, you and I don't have a meaningful relationship in our lives that doesn't require us to have grace. In fact, if there's any friendship or, or family relationship you have and it doesn't require any level of grace, it's probably a shallow one. But the life-changing relationships, the, the ones that really shape us and form us and are deep and are meaningful are ones that have called out of us a kind of grace. And this is what Paul says. Listen to what he writes to the church in Colossians. He says there in chapter three, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. We're holy and beloved. Put on this, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, 
bearing with one another, if one has a complaint against the other, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Now, what's so fascinating about this passage is the same word there for forgiving one another, charismai, is the same Greek word for grace. And so Paul is saying, in the act of forgiving, you are gracing someone. And you are gracing someone, why? Because you have been graced by God. We receive grace and it changes us in such a way that we become people who can give it out as well. Now, remember, he's writing this to Christians. And so the the, the fact that he has to say, put on this, implies that our relationships will be messy. If he has to remind us that we are chosen and we're holy and we're beloved by God, but you need to put something on every day in the same way that you put on clothes, this is something we have to intentionally practice. We have to intentionally practice being compassionate, gracious, forgiving one another. 